lot of you know that, um, that I do watch a lot of football games and still watch a lot of football games. Uh, and I have always been interested in stats and innovations, what's new. Um, I've always taken notes during the game, and um, I'm glad to see our, our friend Jared Roth is here today. I'll never forget the, the first game of, of his at Page when I attended and said, okay, let's, get, let's go over my notes now. And, and Jared was like, you got notes <laughs> on the game. But um, I, I, that's just one part of, I, that I've always enjoyed uh, watching the game and keeping up with, um, with my notes. Last season, um, I, most Saturdays I would say I watched three. Uh, when we had seven players playing at one time, uh, sometimes because of the time difference, I watched all day long. And you know, you notice a lot of things when you watch. Y'all are doing something else on Saturdays, but that's that's always been my Saturday. And last year, I don't know if y'all noticed, but turnovers from some of the beginning games all the way to the championship game made the difference in games. And uh, this first example, this was not a good game. Uh, Missouri Auburn game was full of mistakes, but their overtime. Uh, fumble that ended up with an Auburn recovery um, was devastating. That was on September 24th. And, it, and it, if you watched a lot of games throughout the season, as I said, it was a trend right to the championship games. And uh, so I thought that that would be an important thing to talk to you all about and for you to focus on. I know that all of you know that turnovers are a key component of the game. What I wanted to think about was, okay, what can coaches do about it? So I thought we needed to, to look at some uh, data about it, and there is a tremendous amount of data. So I started researching what the NFL, first of all, since we still have a player, uh, Keenan Allen, uh, with the Chargers, I started looking at, at, at NFL, and then I moved down to college and high school and looked at a lot of statistics. And so there's some of this data I thought was really important for you, and then I, th I believe in the why and have studied with um, some of the programs that Ohio State was gener generous enough to give me. Remember, everything you tell these players and your coaches to do, you need to start with the why. So I feel the same with you. I want to give you the why I feel this strongly about some of these turnovers. One of the most important statistics to remember is that the team, of course, with a positive turnover margin is going to win 70% of the time, 70. Harvard Sports Analysis has done a lot of research on all these things, and that the team with a turnover margin of two or more is going to win 83.9%, 83.9. With a margin of three, I'm so excited y'all are writing this down, Remember, when you write it down, you have twice as much chance of remembering it. And when those of you, if you can get a margin of three, that increases your odds of winning the game to 90.7%. That's a lot, 91, almost 91%. I, I was also interested in some other data they had that the home field advantage has changed in the last 10 years. And where it used to be more of an advantage, that now it's down to 57.2. And the statistics pr uh, predict that it will be edging down to 50% uh, and less. So home field advantage is not uh, quite what we think it, it used to be. And then there's another um, group, a company that puts out a lot of data, and the name of it is sportsquant.com. Sports, S-P-O-R-T-S, Q-U-A-N-T, sportsquant.com. And they, do, they put a lot more emphasis on, on points and yards as they analyze their data. And there'll be pages and pages with, if any of you took statistics of, of all these differentials and all these figures, but it comes down to that a lost fumble costs 4.2 points. 4.2 points. An interception equals out to approximately 4 points. In yards, an average interception costs 23.9. An average interception costs 23.9 yards, and an interception costs 27.5. And an interception is going to cost you 27.5. So 
So then, of course, I wanted to see, okay, who's got the least? Who had the, you know, who had the least turnover in, in the country? Uh, anybody happen to want to take a guess for the NFL? Detroit Lions, colleges, University of Southern Cal, number one, and Duke, number two. So I can guarantee you, and those of you in the room who've coached with us know that Coach Roscoe will be on the way to Duke tomorrow, uh, or contacting Duke to see what they're doing. But they're number two, and so I recommend contacting them. Defense has changed, and I don't have to go into a lecture about, about how much defense has changed in the last few years to, to all of you. But one thing is from drills, from practice time, to gimmicks, defense has stepped up their game to create turnovers. Uh, we're all familiar with the gimmick that started with Miami's turnover chain. Um, but I was fascinated to read what some of the other teams have come up with uh, in the country. Chains, of course, we know with the Miami chain. Chalices, thrones, swords, chainsaws, backpacks, and belts, just to name a few. And some of you, of course, I'm sure have got your own hammers. And I'll never forget the first Virginia Tech game I went to many, many years ago. And, um, and they had their toolbox. So, you know, whatever. But it's not just the gimmick which is very popular to motivate our players, but defense is working on this. So then I said, okay, I asked coach, so what's the offense doing about it? Um, and coach was like, yeah, uh, just a rare old thing. So then I kept researching and researching. And, you know, and the, and the blaster's about 20 years old, but besides, and then the old timey ones were even older than that. But besides blaster drills and ball handling practice, there's not anything else out there. If any of y'all are doing something that you found really, really great besides those two basic areas, uh, we all, we all want to know about it. So I came across an article uh, about some NFL teams when I was looking for a new idea that offense could actually do, things I could, could, could advise you and say, hey, look. And I came across this thing that a lot of NFL players were using in some colleges, and it is called high and tight. Now, high and tight is a football that vibrates and lets your player know he is holding it incorrectly. It cost about $125. We're going to have a, a, a Zoom from this company. They couldn't get here today to tell us about this. And I'm not saying I think this is the, you know, the greatest end all, but the more I read about it and the more I look at it, because it's affordable, number one, I think you should all look at it and think about getting it. And number two, the way players think today, and having worked with many quarterbacks and working with and mentoring my friend Kyle Richardson at Clemson, and we all know their, their quarterback problems that they've had with fumbles and everything, so much of this with some players is psychological. This football, I am convinced, you know, whether it's the great end all or not, is a device psychologically, it is going to make your receivers and your quarterback focus on how they're handling, because it's going to let them know when they're, when they're not handling it correctly. So it's going to make them, number one, be more psychologically secure and comfortable with their ball handling, because they're going to think, I I've been practicing high and tight. And then I think it will bring their concentration to it, because they're carrying the football, this practice high and tight. And I think that will carry over into the game. So I think it's worth a try. As I said, it's very affordable. And I think it has a lot of value. And we all know how our kids love technology. So see, to them, it's, it's a new technology device. And as Coach Brown said, it's an edge.